Okay, cue the Star Wars music. Ready for a cool DIY speed light modifier? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a bigger, brighter lightsaber than any of the ones that you see in the Star Wars movies. And the bonus? These lightsabers are daylight balanced and great for shooting portraits, both in studio and on location. Stay tuned. Hey gang, my name is Joe Edelman, and my mission is to help photographers like you to develop a solid understanding of the hows and whys behind great photography so that you can achieve your goals as a photographer. You know, light modifiers come in all shapes and sizes, and indeed, the cooler they are, the more they tend to cost. As I've shown you in the past, the only thing that makes one modifier better than another is how well it solves a problem in any given situation. If you understand light and the inverse square law, you can work with inexpensive modifiers and do the same things that the more expensive ones do. Remember this video about creating beauty dish light with a cheap shoot-through umbrella? Recently, Broncolor, the Swiss lighting company, announced what they call an ultra-portable light shaper called the Light Pipe P. This is a 49-inch, 360-degree light modifier with a 6.7-inch diameter that works only on Broncolor strobes and it sells for a mere $1,289.60 at B&H Photo. But it does come with a case. Now, I don't see a lot of use for the 360 degree spread in still work, but the Light Pipe P has attachable reflectors that turn it into a long strip light. So this is kind of a cool concept, but at $1,200 and limited to use on brown color strobes, it's pretty much worthless to most of the photography community. If you like this idea, there is a company in Florida called Saber Strip, designed by a photographer for photographers. The Saber Strip is a speed light modifier made from military grade phenolic tubing and high tension spinnaker cloth. The Saber Strip is 39 inches long with a diameter of 3.24 inches and it weighs just one pound, two ounces, without the flash installed. The way the Saber Strip works is that you unscrew the cap, mount your speed light, and insert the entire speed light into the tube. Now, in my opinion, that's a design flaw. Once your strobe is inside that tube, you can't access the controls. Not all speed light flashes will fit inside the Saber Strip, and depending on your triggering system, you have to attach the receiver to the outside of the tube and run the cable into the tube. Even for a lot of the smaller hot shoe type receivers, you have to purchase special cords to get them to work inside the tube. Saber Strip does give compatibility guidance and cord recommendations on their website. I have a link to it in the description below. The Saber Strip sells for $135, and it's available for order in the US, Canada, Europe, and Australia. Light modifiers of this type can be a nice addition to a photographer's lighting arsenal. Obviously, the Saber Strip that works with your existing speed lights at $135 makes much more sense than the $1,200 light pipe that requires you to also use brown color strobes. But for me, spending even $135 for something that will only get occasional use is hard to justify. So I set out to create my own DIY light strip lightsaber modifier. And along the way, I came up with a few feature tweaks that I feel make it even more versatile than the others on the market. One three inch by 60 inch craft mailing tube with end caps. Two one inch by 12 inch hook and loop cable tie down straps. One 24 inch by 48 inch sheet of white translucent plastic film, which by the way, will allow you to make as many as four lightsabers. One tripod screw holder adapter. One flash speed light umbrella holder one one inch flat washer, one quarter 20 by one inch screw. You will also need a jigsaw, table saw, or a really sharp utility knife to make the cuts. Additionally, there are three supplies that you either already have or will be able to use on multiple projects. Black gaffer's tape, white spray paint, and super glue. With the design of the Saber Strip in mind, I wanted to find a solution that would allow me to access the controls of my speed light without having to remove it from the tube. I was also concerned about mounting the entire weight of the unit by the end cap. The end caps that come with mailing tubes are thin plastic, so I knew that wouldn't work. Since the tubes are 60 inches long, I decided to use the whole tube. You could certainly cut it down to 48 or 36 inches and have a smaller strip modifier. I measured 8.5 inches from one end of the tube and then cut out half of the tube to make the tray for my speed 
speed light. You can see here that I used two two by three boards as a guide to draw the lines on the tube that needed to be cut. Then from this cut, I measured six inches further down and marked that spot. I then measured two inches from the other end of the tube and marked that spot. If you want to narrow the spread of the light from your strip, you can make this opening thinner. I measured mine using the same two by three inch boards. The next step is a quick coat of white paint on the inside of the tube. Once the paint dries, it's time to cover the tube with the black gaffer's tape. My original plan had been to paint the outside, but the gaffer's tape was faster, looks just as good, and it has a texture that makes it easier to grab the modifier. It is important to paint the inside of the tube, otherwise your modifier will not be giving you daylight balanced light because of the brownish yellow color of the cardboard tube. Next up, I super glued the two hook and loop cable ties to the unit to hold the speed light in place. Next, I strapped in the speed light and balanced the tube on my finger to find its balance point. This is a very important step, so take your time and do it right. I marked the balance point and drilled a hole for the quarter 20 screw. Simply placed a washer over the hole, inserted the screw, and attached the tripod screw holder adapter and tightened as much as possible. It is super important that you do this with your speed light attached to the unit, otherwise you'll be placing unnecessary stress on the cardboard tube when you try to balance it on a stand. Last step. Cut a piece of the stiff translucent film. In this case, I cut it six inches wide by 48 inches long. Then simply curl it, slide it into the opening of the tube, and release. If you want to make it permanent, a few drops of super glue will hold it for good. Last steps, add the end cap so that the light doesn't shoot out the end of the tube, and add the speed light umbrella holder, and for just over $20, you've built your own speed light lightsaber with a 44 inch opening that weighs only two and a half pounds without the speed light. You can mount it vertically or horizontally, and the adjustable speed light umbrella holder lets you set up in just about any angle or position that you want to. And since it's lightweight, it will easily work on compact light stands without wobbling. The tube is also wind resistant, meaning it's not gonna blow around outside like a big softbox would. And you can access the controls of your speed light without having to remove it from the unit. Here's the light spread that you get with the lightsaber in a vertical position at three feet from a gray background. And here's what you get in a horizontal position at the same distance. For vertical shots, I tend to place my speed light at the top as opposed to the bottom so that any amount of shadow will be created from the light above my subject, not below. I find that the light tends to be slightly brighter closer to the flash. Not a lot, but still brighter. Here is a simple one light portrait. I have Monet seated about five feet in front of a black Savage seamless paper background. The light strip is placed on camera right with a LumaPro LP180R speed light at the top. You can see that I have the majority of the strip placed above her eyes because I still want the light to be falling from above. Here's the same setup with a Walmart reflector added on camera left as a fill. And here I've added a second light strip on camera left as a fill instead of the reflector. In this last shot, I added a third LumaPro LP180R on a short stand behind Monet and aimed up at the black backdrop to get this gray gradient effect for a little more separation. Same background, different outfit and hairstyle, I went with two light strips and a clamshell setup, one below Monet and one above. I still have the background light on the short stand in this shot. In this setup, you can see that I have two lights, one on either side of her, but what I've done is angled them towards her at the bottom. This keeps the light a little brighter on the top and uses the bottom of the light strip to create a fill, giving me an almost clamshell lighting type of effect. Then just to throw you a few more variations on this V-shaped setup, here I have the background light at the same low power and added an orange gel. And then I still have the orange gel but dialed the power of the speed light up to about half power. Like I always show you, the possibilities are endless. I can even take this same setup, remove the orange gel from the background light, and switch to a white seamless paper backdrop, and get this as a final result. Same lighting arrangement as the last shot, I only changed the background and turned up the power of the background flash. While we're working with a white background, I can go back to the clamshell setup, one above, one below, add a fan, and get a glamour look like this. So there you have it. An hour and a half of your time, less than $25 out of your pocket, and you can have a cool strip light lightsaber modifier that works in studio or on location. It is durable, lightweight, and wind resistant, and you could always use it as a prop for your next Star Wars inspired theme shoot. I hope that sparks some ideas for you. Take this idea and run with it. Go create and show me what you come up with. If you do build your own, please do share some photos of it along with your results in my Facebook group. The link 
It's in the description below. Hey gang, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss any videos. And until next time, go pick up that camera and shoot something because your best shot, <laughs> it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting, gang. Adios.